on tonight's summary of the Israel-Hamas War, Day 142. Building on the framework from the Second Paris Summit, the hostage negotiations are due to begin in Qatar tomorrow. Alongside cautious optimism, Hamas has yet to approve the Paris framework. Israeli Prime Minister adds new terms for negotiations to progress, raising eyebrows about the timing of adding these terms after the negotiation framework has been resolved. The IDF expands its operation in Han Yunus to the Abbasan area in the eastern parts of the city. The Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gagan says that fire against Hezbollah will increase and that this has unconnected with the truce in Gaza. A New York Times editorial calls upon President Biden to bypass Prime Minister Netanyahu and speak directly to the Israeli public, citing that the administration now sees Netanyahu as an obstacle in the region. Hello everyone, I am Alon Burstein, visiting assistant professor in the Department of Political Science and Israel Institute Fellow at the University of California, Irvine, here bringing you the summary of the last 24 hours of the Israel-Hamas War. It is currently the evening of February 25th, 2024 in the United States, the morning of February 26th, 2024 in the Middle East. Starting with the hostage situation, negotiations are going to resume in Qatar tomorrow. Hamas has yet to give its answer with regards to the second Paris summit where the framework for negotiations was developed. Despite this, there is still cautious optimism that is being reported on all sides. The teams are reportedly going to begin discussing the list of hostages to be released, the formulas of Palestinian prisoners that will be released, i.e. how many Palestinian prisoners for each Israeli hostage, and the identity of the Palestinian prisoners, the terms of the truce, and the idea of redeployment. Other elements also include the possibility of Palestinian civilians returning to the northern parts of the Gaza Strip, Israel's demand that female soldiers that are held hostage be considered women who are released in the first phase, rather than counted as soldiers who are released in later phases, and Hamas's demand that, like in the previous truce in November, the IDF have no spy flyovers and no drone activity in the Gaza Strip during the truce. According to reports, the way the negotiations are going to progress, right now they're going to start in Qatar, and if they are successful, then the next round is going to continue in Cairo, where where the sides are going to discuss timing and the final technical details of the truce and hostage exchange. Hamas sources stated today that Israel and the United States are repeating optimism very publicly in order to lay the groundwork for if negotiations fail, they say that this will be used by Israel and the US to legitimize the invasion of Rafah should these negotiation rounds not succeed. Other news, Prime Minister Netanyahu presented further terms today for the negotiations to progress. Among others, it is reported that he is demanding that Hamas first deliver a list of which hostages are alive and which are not before negotiations can continue, and also that he instructed the negotiation teams that Israel demands that the quote-unquote heaviest Palestinian prisoners, i.e. those Palestinian prisoners who are sentenced to life in Israeli jails but may be released, will be deported to a third party, maybe Qatar, Turkey, or any other country, rather than being released to the Palestinian territories, the West Bank or the Gaza Strip. Reportedly, when he was speaking to the War Cabinet today, Netanyahu also criticized the Israeli delegation in the Paris summit for agreeing to a substantial increase of 508 trucks per day that will, enter during, that will enter the Gaza Strip during the truce. Different political actors in Israel began to question Netanyahu's timing today, some even saying that he appears to be trying to torpedo the deal by adding more terms in order to enable negotiations to proceed days after the final framework for the negotiation to proceed was agreed upon by all sides. Hamas has not even delivered its answer to if they agree to that framework, and meanwhile Netanyahu is adding more terms, saying if they are not met, negotiations cannot continue. Among the political factors that are being implied is the pressure on Netanyahu from his right-wing government. Among them, the most prominent figure, Finance Minister Betsail Smotrich, stated in an interview today that he does not understand why there is pressure to achieve a hostage deal so fast, and that it is unreasonable that four months into the war, where Hamas has been dismantled and is suffering under the IDF, Israel needs to pay such a high price during negotiations. Negotiations. He said that Israel has time, since while in Gaza they are living like refugees, our soldiers are sleeping well and eating well. Other news related to the hostages, Oz Daniel, who is an IDF soldier who was kidnapped on October 7th, has been declared dead. The IDF confirmed that evidence shows that he was killed on October 7th and his body was kidnapped and is being held in the Gaza Strip. Moving on to the Gaza Strip, there were no rockets or mortars sent from the Gaza Strip targeting Israel in the last 24 hours. In the northern parts of the Gaza Strip, a Hamas unit was seen trying to operate a drone in the Al Shadi refugee camp today. IDF warplanes attacked that unit and it was killed. In Beit Lahia, there were reported bombings against a house in the area. At least four Palestinians were reported killed. In the Jabalia refugee camp, the Al Quds Brigade, that is the military wing of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, reported firing rockets at a group of IDF soldiers. And in Gaza City, the Al Quds Brigade also stated that it's 
sniping units attacked the IDF soldiers as well. In other incidents in Gaza City, a bombing raid was also noted in the Sabara neighborhood. It was not reported by the IDF, but were the targets of these different raids. The IDF ground units in the north are mostly operating in the Zaytun area. It is possible that the IDF ground units are going to expand to their operations to these other areas, and that is why we're seeing an increase of bombing raids at this time. The bulk of the fighting remains in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip in Hanunis. There were intensive gun battles that were reported in the western parts of the city and increased idea of drone activity as well. In one instance, Hamas operatives were held up in a building and carrying a gun, an extensive gun battle with the IDF. The IDF deployed a range of tactics in what is called pressure cooker protocol, which is gradually increasing the firepower against the structure to get the people inside to surrender. The IDF eventually managed to take over the building. The Al-Quds brigades also reported firing mortars at IDF soldiers in different parts of Hanunis. Primarily, most of the most of those were reported that they were in the heart of the city and the western parts of the city. In addition, there was a substantial expansion of IDF activity today towards the eastern parts of Hanunis, with the IDF ground forces entering the Abbasan areas, specifically Abbasan al-Kabira and Abbasan al-Jadida. IDF is reportedly going house to house in the area, uncovering substantial weaponry in different caches. A rocket launcher and long-range rockets were also found in a medical lab in the area. The IDF reported that it also arrested several Hamas operatives that were trying to evacuate the fighting regions alongside Palestinian civilians. It was not reported that this was in the western parts of the city or in the eastern parts of the city. Other news from the Gaza Strip. The IDF published a summary of its activity in the Nasser Hospital at the end of the two-week operation. The IDF reports that it had arrested roughly 200 Palestinians who were involved in terror activity and found substantial evidence showing that the hospital was being used for terrorism. In addition, the IDF emphasized that the hospital continued to function during the operation and that the IDF brought in electrical experts to deal with problems that arose during the operation in the hospital, supplied the hospital with hundreds of shipments of food, water, baby formula, and medical equipment, and that the IDF coordinated with international agencies to facilitate the delivery of fuel during its operation. In addition, the statement added, prior to leaving the hospital, the IDF cleaned up the area and arranged another food shipment. In other news, in a CBS interview today, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu related to the operation in Rafah and stated that if there is a hostage deal, then the operation will be postponed, but will take place later, and if there is no hostage deal, the operation will go forth. He added that once the operation begins, Israel will, will be weeks away from complete victory, explicitly stating that if a hostage deal occurs, then this is going to take months. Earlier in the day, the U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan again stated that the U.S. objects to a Rafah operation without seeing a viable plan to protect the scores of Palestinian civilians there, adding that President Biden has yet to be briefed on the Israeli operation. Amidst this, it was reported today that the IDF presented to Israel's war cabinet the military's plans for evacuating the civilian population from the Rafah region. In the announcement that was made by the Prime Minister's office, it was stated that the cabinet also approved the IDF's plans for distributing humanitarian aid in a way that will stop the looting that has occurred primarily in the northern parts of the Gaza Strip. Relating to the Rafah operation, Egypt reportedly sent back-channel messages to Israel that an operation during the month of Ramadan has the potential to ignite the entire region that, as is, is already a powder keg. According to some reports, Israel assured Egypt that it will coordinate any Rafah activities with the country. Regarding casualties, two IDF soldiers were reported killed in the Gaza Strip in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of IDF soldiers killed in the Gaza Strip since the invasion began to 240. Three IDF soldiers reported injured in the Gaza Strip in the last 24 hours. The total number of IDF soldiers injured in the Gaza Strip since the invasion began is 1,400. The Palestinian Health Ministry in the Gaza Strip is reporting that 86 Palestinians were killed in the Gaza Strip in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of Palestinians killed in the Gaza Strip since the war began to 29,692. 69,897 Palestinians are reported injured in the Gaza Strip, and many thousands are still buried under the rubble and presumed dead. Moving on to the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip, spokesperson for the Red Cross in the Gaza Strip stated today that 90% of the Strip's inhabitants have become internally displaced. Regarding the entrance of aid trucks, the Israeli police announced that the Karim Shalom crossing is going to be closed on Tuesday due to municipal elections in Israel. And amidst reports of continued, continuous problems with the aid distribution mechanisms in the Gaza Strip and the breakdown of these mechanisms specifically in the north and in the Rafah region, Al Jazeera published photos today of huge convoys of trucks on the Egyptian side of Rafah. According to reports, the, there are estimated 2,000 trucks that are waiting on the Egyptian side of the border to deliver humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. However, due to the problems of aid distribution, they are currently stuck on the Egyptian side. Other news, thousands of people reportedly queued up in Gaza City for a possible delivery of flour today after UNRWA stated that it is stopping its food distribution attempts in the northern parts of the Gaza Strip yesterday. UNRWA quoted the Shahab News Network stating today also that a two-month-old baby died of hunger in the Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza City.
Other news, Israel's Minister of Construction and Housing, Yitzhak Goldknopf, sent a letter to Prime Minister Netanyahu today demanding that the Prime Minister's office approve the moves that he is trying to promote to declare UNRWA a terror organization. There were no reports made regarding how many aid trucks managed to enter the Gaza Strip in the last 24 hours. According to the average of the last several weeks, it has been between 60 and 80. It remains to be seen. Moving on to the West Bank, there was substantial IDF activity reported throughout many different parts of the West Bank. Some of these were reported in Abu Dis, where there were a lot of engineering units that were also making adjustments to the separation barrier. Other activity was, was, was reported in the El Arub refugee camp in Bethlehem, in Nablus, and in El Bire. In a checkpoint near Tul Karim, there was reportedly gunfire between the IDF and armed Palestinians. No reports were made regarding if anyone was injured or arrested. A total of 12 Palestinians reported arrested in the West Bank in the last 24 hours. Moving on to the northern parts of Israel, southern parts of Lebanon, there's ongoing escalations as has been for the last days. There were barrages of rockets sent in towards the areas of Margaliot, Hardov, Shar Yeshuv, substantial barrages also throughout the day towards Kiryat Shmona, Minara, Dishon, and Malachia. Earlier barrages from Lebanon targeted the areas of Rajar, and a drone alerts were sounded throughout the day in areas of Dafna, Hagoshrim, Kibbutz Dan, and other areas. Aerial, an aerial target was reportedly intercepted in the Upper Galilee in the areas of Metula, and Shmona, and Tel Chai. Also, moments before recording this, drone alerts were also sounded in the areas of Majd shams Masada, and Nimrod. Hezbollah claimed that it carried out also seven different border incidents throughout the day. These usually relate to gunfire towards IDF outposts along the, along the border. Regarding IDF activity, IDF warplanes reportedly attacked Hezbollah units in the Bleda village, alongside targeting Hezbollah infrastructure in the area. El Manar also reported artillery fire towards the Hula village, and other sources also say there was artillery fire towards the areas of Shuva and Hamam. The IDF also reported that it carried out several different attacks throughout the day against different launching sites. Other news, Israel has extended the current evacuation plans of Israeli civilians from the northern parts of, of Israel. Israel has, is now allowing, or at least developing the plans, to allow civilians that have been evacuated from the areas close to the Lebanese border to stay in their evacuated areas until the end of July. Other news, Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gagan stated today that Israel is going to increase its fire against Hezbollah, again emphasizing that regardless of any truce that occurs in the Gaza Strip, the IDF is going to continue targeting Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. So it has been reported in the last weeks that the IDF intends to continue its attacks against Hezbollah, even if a truce develops in the Gaza Strip. It remains to be seen what Hezbollah will do then. In the previous truce, Hezbollah stopped its fire when the truce was developed in the Gaza Strip. At that time, however, the IDF was only retaliating against Hezbollah rather than initiating attacks. Now, the IDF is saying it's going to continue those attacks, and it remains to be seen what will happen in the northern front if this truce does develop in the coming weeks. Hezbollah announced more of its operatives were killed in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of Hezbollah operatives that the group says have been killed since the war began to 215. The IDF states that that number is much higher. On the Syrian front, the IDF reportedly detonated two structures that had been established in Israeli territory along the border between Israel, Lebanon, and Syria. According to the reports, these were established in recent days and were being used as lookout posts. In addition, El Mian reported that the IDF attacked two trucks along the Lebanese-Syrian border in the northern parts of Lebanon near the El Qusayr region. According to some reports, the two trucks were detonated and secondary explosions were seen in the area, indicating they may have had weaponry, and that also Hezbollah operatives were killed in that attack. Moving on to some of the regional developments, UK MTO reported an unusual incident today. They stated that a small, fast ship was behaving in an unusual manner near the Gulf of Oman off the coast of the United Arab Emirates, added that the two people on board appeared to be wearing military uniforms. No reports were made regarding if this ship actually carried out any attacks or what happened after that. However, that report was made amidst different reports in the last several weeks that Iran and its different militias are planning to expand their activities to other regions. Other news, the Houthis fired a nautical ballistic missile towards a U.S. oil tanker in the Gulf of Aden today. The missile reportedly missed, and two suicide drones in the area were also intercepted before they managed to carry out their attacks. Moving on to some of the political developments from the last 24 hours, in a major rally orchestrated by Brazil's former President Bolsonaro, Israeli flags reportedly waved alongside Brazilian flags. This is meant to counter the statements of the current Brazilian President Lula da Silva, who again today stated that Israel is carrying out one of the worst genocides ever seen in the Gaza Strip. According to reports, some of the signs also showed different heart shapes around Israel, and apologies were made during the speech for Brazil's behavior towards Israel.
Other news, El Miyadin reported today that under U.S. pressure, the Palestinian government, headed by Mohammed Ashtia, is going to submit its resignation to Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas as part of laying the groundwork for the development of a joint government between Hamas and other Palestinian factions that will be in charge of rebuilding the Gaza Strip after the war. Sources close to Mohammed Ashtia denied this. However, other reports later circulated also in different news sites in the Arab world. The most developed one was the Saudi Al Arabiya news network that stated that this resignation may happen this week or later on as part of a deal between the sides to develop this new government. There's a lot of mystery surrounding this government. On the one hand, it is, on one hand, it is being championed by the Palestinian Authority as part of the reforms that they are doing amidst U.S. pressure. On the other hand, there's also a lot of concern that is reported in the Palestinian Authority that this government government may end up representing Hamas's side in the Gaza Strip and will further deepen the fracture between the two sides rather than serving to unify. Relating to the future of the Gaza Strip, there was an editorial published in the New York Times today calling upon President Biden to bypass Prime Minister Netanyahu and approach the Israeli public directly. It states that Biden can clarify to the Israelis that they have a choice, a never-ending war, or a day-after plan that includes rebuilding the Gaza Strip and peace with Saudi Arabia. It adds that the Biden administration is gradually viewing Netanyahu as an obstacle to peace in the region, and explicitly states that the latest moves of the administration indicate that the U.S. is losing patience with Netanyahu's endless war. The editorial also proposes that the administration can consider bringing a two-state resolution as a binding proposal to the UN Security Council, adding that the United States is the only one that could let this pass, and that this would also emphasize to Israel that this is the only solution that the United States sees as a future development in the region. If you enjoy these reports, please do remember to subscribe, give them a like. If you want to know when, when reports come out, turn on notifications. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I promise to try and answer each and every one. That is my report for the last 24 hours. I'll be back tomorrow.